Today's agenda will address the size of the pain problem, both in cost and value, and factors that contribute to silent suffering in the workplace. Next, we'll illustrate how to best address equity gaps in race, gender, ethnicity, and condition. We'll touch on the innovative solutions that can close these gaps, and finally, hear a moving story from Danielle, a former SWORD pelvic floor therapy member on her journey with pelvic pain. Let's start by painting the problem with pain and the impact musculoskeletal pain is having on over half of the adult population. Musculoskeletal, also known as MSK pain, has a massive impact on humanity. While over 50% of Americans are currently suffering with MSK pain, SWORD survey research has shown that the number could be much higher. In 2020, we found that of the American adults who transitioned to work from home during the pandemic, almost 80% were suffering from MSK pain. More recently, we conducted a survey that showed 95% of American adults will experience MSK pain in their life. Not only are MSK injuries a source of pain and discomfort for employees, they are also costing employers. On average, 15 to 24% of employees med employers' medical costs are connected to musculoskeletal disorders, making it their number one or number two cost driver. When we dig in further and look at what the key driver is for this spend, it's surgeries, and not all of them are essential. In fact, one in two surgeries are unnecessary and avoidable. Why then are so many surgeries being performed when they uh, don't need to? Well, the current patient journey for someone experiencing pain is unpredictable and fragmented. Most begin by scheduling an appointment with their PCP. From there, things get kind of crazy. Your PCP may write a refer referral for physical therapy. They may send you for imaging, prescribe some painkillers, or in some situations, send you straight to an orthopedic surgeon. By the time most people make it through some or all of these steps, they feel defeated, exhausted, and desperate for an immediate answer to their pain, which most believe is surgery. What then can employers and patients do to break this pattern? Physical therapy is seen by physicians as the best line of defense against, against MSK pain. It's less invasive than surgery, better for long-term pain management than injections and opioids, and provides better overall physical and mental health benefits. PT should be the solution, but unfortunately, there are a number of barriers with traditional brick and mortar PT. Here are just a few of them. Cost, so anything from co-pays, and if you have a high deductible plan, each visit could run your members hundreds of dollars. The convenience, scheduling, keeping appointments, the uncertainty of whether or not you're even doing the exercises correctly once you get home, and then the underlying problem of, do you even do the sessions at all? All of these are resulting in poor engagement. 70% of people who receive physical therapy drop out and don't even complete the recommended sessions, and almost half of low back patients drop out after just four sessions. This last stat is the most alarming, as most of the unnecessary surgeries performed are back or spinal surgeries, and spinal, fu uh, spinal fusions specifically are the most costly MSK surgery for employers and their employees. The good news is that the demand for virtual solutions is on the rise among employers and consumers alike. In a business group on health study for large employers, 80% say they believe virtual care will have a significant impact on the way care is delivered. One of the positive effects of the pandemic is that it seems to have improved people's tolerance for virtual care and willingness to try it. And this includes virtual physical therapy. As a result, we're looking at engagement that's much higher than even the gold standard of care. Now, we're gonna have our first poll question for today. We shared that half of adults experience MSK pain, and we're curious how many of our attendees today have experience with MSK pain. This can be chronic or acute across any joint. So over on the right side, you should be able to vote in the poll, and we'll wait for those results to pop up shortly. Pablo? There you go, I just closed the poll and I will show results right now. So you should see them uh, on your on the bottom right corner of your screen. Lauren, can you locate that? Oh, yeah. wow. So let's see, the results we have, 71% of you on the call said yes, uh, which is way above the 50% we predicted. And just from my own personal experience, I think we all have a, a ton of experience with pain. 
Um, so as you all know too well, the impact it has on your, it has a massive impact on your day-to-day -day activities, hobbies, productivity at work, mental health, and overall quality of life. I'd like to take a moment to talk about my own experience with pain, uh, something I lived with in silence for well over a decade. Like many of you, I live a very busy and full life. I'm on the sales team here at SWORD, helping benefit leaders like yourself evaluate MSK solutions for their people, a wife, stepmother to four amazing children, all under the age of 10, obsessed with all things fitness, from CrossFit, boxing, Zumba, Peloton, you name it, and traveling the world. Uh, we primarily go to Disney World to escape the brutal cold winters up here in Wisconsin. However, um, what was also part of my life in all ways was pain. My back pain started in my early 20s after years of competitive marching band and dance. Depending on the day, my pain would alternate between a dull, achy, throbbing, and sharp, stabbing sensation that would make me catch my breath and that would radiate down my legs. This went on for a few weeks before I made an appointment with my PCP. She prescribed physical therapy, and I was optimistic. At that time, I was early in my career, living in Chicago, and the cost of physical therapy really gave me sticker shock. I ultimately had to choose between weekly physical therapy visits or groceries, and I obviously chose groceries. I then went down what I thought was a more cost-effective route of painkillers and cortisone injections uh, because it gave me longer-term relief. I kept with that pattern for almost a decade. Uh, two separate doctors even suggested surgery, but I did my research and saw that the stats for a better quality of life were not in my favor, so I just kept on with the normal course. Over that time, I still experienced pain regularly, almost on the daily, and it kept me from doing certain activities like running, horseback riding, and then eventually playing sports with my four step kids. It wasn't until I joined SWORD a year ago um, that I learned that we can participate in virtual physical therapy as employees, and I realized I no longer have an excuse to put off physical therapy. I must have felt really confident about my chances of recovering because I did something totally crazy, and I signed up for the Chicago Marathon. I knew if I was going to make it through a marathon and the months of training leading up to it, I really had to get my back pain under control for good. Um, so I started and I signed up. I selected my physical therapist, Julie, and we got to work. I shared my back pain history with her, what activities made the pain better or worse, my current lifestyle, and the goals to accomplish the Chicago Marathon. She put together a personalized program to not only address my back pain, but also strengthen weak supporting muscles for running to prevent any future injuries that may come from increased intensity and distance. I performed my back PT at least three times per week and noticed my day-to-day -day pain diminishing after just a few weeks. I continued with my exercises through training and even one-off pains popped up uh, while I was training. So for example, around when I did my 12 mile run, I came back, my right knee felt like it was gonna fall off and my left hip was just bugging me like crazy. Uh, I sent a message to Julie. She responded immediately uh, with exercises and stretches to really help me work through it. And I was able to get through the rest of training. On October 9th, I checked off a massive bucket list item for me and completed the Chicago Marathon. Over the years, I couldn't even run a mile without excruciating pain. And to have successfully run 26.2 miles with some pain because it is a marathon. I know for a fact I would not have made it through training and race day if I didn't have Julie and the convenience and flexibility of a virtual solution like SORT. The reality is there are lots of people like me across your organizations living in pain every single day, but they have huge goals. Maybe it's running a race, taking their dog for a walk, playing with their kids, or walking their child down the aisle um, on their wedding day. And unfortunately, um, they're not able to access the care they need due to the barriers we talked about and inequities in healthcare. Whether physical or financial, it's not easy for people to receive care that fits their needs. Equity in healthcare is finally being addressed and as we work towards closing geographical and racial gaps. So at this time, I'm gonna ask Brittany who is one of our clinical specialists at SWORD and a licensed doctor of physical therapy. Brittany, what does equitable physical therapy look like to you? 
Thank you so much for sharing your story, Lauren. Um, before we talk about that, I just want to consider first, what are the differences between equality and equity? So equality means that each person is given the same exact resources and opportunities, while equity accounts for each person having differing circumstances and then allocates the needed resources and opportunities needed to reach an equal outcome. So equity is really prioritizing treatment and care based on need, while equality doesn't always work in practice because some people need more support or a different kind of support than others. So what we want to do is be able to give every person the opportunity to attain their full health potential and ensure that no one is disadvantaged because of their socially determined circumstances, race, ethnicity, or gender. So the first thing I want to talk about here is access to care um, is one of the things we want to be considering. So getting people to physical therapy, as Lauren mentioned, is a challenge. And that's why we see dismal engagement rates in outpatient care and even worse engagement rates for those who live in rural areas with less access to a physical therapist. I live in Pittsburgh now, but before that I lived in rural Pennsylvania, and I cannot tell you how many times I've had patients come to me with an injury that worsened over time, turned into more of a chronic condition because they put off getting conservative care because of the limited access and what that meant for them. So if you consider someone potentially working from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., if they have to drive 45 minutes to get to a clinic, this leaves a very limited time frame when they can even schedule their physical therapy appointments because PT clinics typically close between 6 or 7 p.m. at the very latest. So if we think about a 45-minute drive each way and an hour appointment, that's two and a half hours out of your day, doing that three times a week, that requires a very large time commitment that most people cannot sustain for the typical 8 to 12 weeks that is needed for a full physical therapy um, course of treatment. So what that does is it leads to an extremely high cancellation rate and a very low treatment completion rate. And when that happens, that means people are typically not fully recovering from their injuries. So when people aren't fully able to get recover, they're going to be reaching for other things to, that seem more convenient, right? And historically, this has meant going for injections or reaching for the medications. And unfortunately, oftentimes that means opioids are coming into play here. And this really contributes to the opioid epidemic that is devastating our rural communities and leading to higher drug overdose death rates here. So... A way to help this and improve this access to care issue is providing equitable physical therapy, which allows PTs to be accessed from anywhere. And in addition to the proximity and accessibility barriers, we also want to be considering the effects of racial disparities and their impact of accessing equi equitable care. So I'm going to go ahead and let Liz touch a bit more on that now. Thank you, Brittany. So when it comes to outpatient physical therapy, we know that minorities are still enduring the brunt of health inequities. We know that despite minority groups reporting similar rates of MSK conditions, they're also reporting greater pain and disability levels comparatively. And they are also significantly less likely to receive PT as reported in the data. Upon reflecting on why this could be, I can just draw my experiences as a physical therapist who has practiced in the New York City metropolitan area. My main specialty is helping folks with pelvic health conditions where symptoms include but are not limited to things like urinary leakage, pelvic pain, pelvic pressure, or abdominal separation after birth. Specialists like myself make up only 7% of all of the PTs across the nation, and so as you can imagine, access to CS is very slim, not only in quantity but affordability as well. I'd say in New York City about over 90% of pelvic floor PTs are out of network or cash-based, cash meaning patients are looking at paying about $300 a session. I would really often receive comments from patients across all insurance carriers, including the city workers and public school teachers, that I was the only pelvic floor PT in the entire New York City area that accepted their insurance. So many of my patients that were part of minority groups would have vast trouble completing their plans of care as they usually had longer, you know, sometimes 40 minute to one hour commutes from the outer boroughs and couldn't take time off work or find childcare to come in two to three times a week. So in addition to barriers in access, time and demand, from the data we're seeing, even as recent as 2022, Black, Hispanic and Alaska Native groups face issues with inequality in healthcare, whether that's opioids, feeling unsafe in medical facilities, or being recommended to surgery. 
and these groups face the highest number of interventions and the highest rate of mortality as well. Thanks for sharing that, Liz. And when you share these statistics and just your own personal experience helping people get access to care, it's so fascinating and yet so alarming that this is happening probably to employees across the country. In your experience, what is it about digital care then that really gives these groups the best shot at healing? Yeah, that's a great question, Lauren. So really because of systemic racism, racism in healthcare, Black and Hispanic groups are typically less educated in, on their conditions by physicians and often report feeling unsafe in medical facilities. Cost is a burden on these socioeconomic groups, making them less likely to seek care in the first place. And then when they gain access to a solution through insurance, that doesn't discriminate um, and puts the care, education, and movement into their control, they do it and they recover. So while the gap is nowhere near closed, there is evidence of how digital physical therapy is a step in the right direction. And we see that published literature shows that Black and Hispanic groups have having worse outcomes following rehab and PT programs. However, when using SWORD, our data is actually showing that these groups have the most potential for recovery. And you can see here that up against other racial and ethnic groups, Black and Hispanic groups are achieving a 30% greater pain reduction. And this is really proof that physical therapy from the comfort of your own home can make a positive impact on underserved groups. So now let's just take a closer look at gender disparities in particular. So women are 37% more likely than men to experience chronic pain. So why could this be? Maybe it's because women have elevated risk factors with pelvic health, or it could be because women aren't listened to or understood by their doctors and wait until it's more urgent to get care. Women also tend to normalize pain as part of their lives and push through it as well. But either way, there is some good news. We know that women are also 30% more likely than men to seek help through digital physical therapy or physical therapy in general, making them good candidates for a digital care solution. So pelvic floor disorders are a leading cause of musculoskeletal pain for women, which we can see here one in four will endure in their lifetime. We can see from the data here that these disorders are highly prevalent in women throughout their entire lifespan, not just later in life. Not only do these monetary costs add up significantly compared with healthy women, but so do the mental costs as well. We know that those that are suffering with pelvic health disorders are significantly more likely to suffer from anxiety and depression. We know that women are the silent sufferers. Most women wait six and a half years before they get help for their pelvic pain, and doctors are often dismissive. I can't tell you how many patients I've had that by the time they come to see me have seen several doctors over the course of years trying to get answers. One woman more recently going through menopause, she has had issues since you know being pregnant over 35 years ago. She never sought help because she thought it was normal to have urinary leakage from pregnancy. And whenever she would mention it to doctors, they tell her that it was normal and send her away. Over the years, she's gone through a lot. She's had a vaginal mesh surgery, injections, laser treatments. And it wasn't until recently that one urologist referred her and recommended physical therapy, which, by the way, helped eliminate her symptoms completely. Many of these people tell me horror stories of physicians writing off their pain and just telling them, you know, you're fine, just go home and have some wine and relax. And oftentimes these conditions are written off as normal, but really calling this normal is having a devastating impact on productivity and wellness, and so it's important to acknowledge it. And it's also important to give women access to pelvic care whenever, wherever they are and also wherever they need it. So in fact, access is a huge component for success, and a virtual solution makes it possible for people to have access to life-changing physical therapy at all hours of the day. What we see across the spectrum of SWORD's clients is that 70% of all member sessions are performed during non-traditional clinic hours. So that's 48% Monday through Friday after 6 p.m. before 8 a.m. and another 22% on the weekends. It's also important to have something comprehensive that covers all of their needs. Yeah, that's exactly right, Liz. A comprehensive solution is very important here, and we are providing a comprehensive solution here in multiple ways. First, we are addressing conditions across the entire continuum of care, 
from prevention, acute, chronic, pre and post operatively. And then secondly, we're addressing the full spectrum of pain through working on all major joints and body areas that you can see listed. Um, on the top, you can see what we traditionally think of as musculoskeletal pain, so neck, back, shoulders, essentially all the major joints from the neck down to the foot and ankle. And then below that, we're also addressing pelvic health disorders, as this is a musculoskeletal health concern. As Liz, as Liz mentioned, one in four women experience a pelvic floor disorder, which means there are people all around you who may be suffering in silence and likely are. And these pelvic health concerns have, by and large, been, as Liz mentioned, overlooked, downplayed, and flat out just not not discussed. So we're really changing the tides here by one, educating and bringing awareness to the fact that there is something that we can do to address these concerns. And then also by providing women and those with vaginal anatomy a clinical grade solution from the comfort of their own home with the support of a pelvic health specialist for conditions like things like pelvic pain, bladder and bowel health, sexual health, pregnancy, postpartum, and menopause. Liz will go into a bit more depth of, about these in a little bit here, but what we're doing is we're really closing the gap and meeting a huge unmet need that does currently exist in musculoskeletal care. So why do we put so much emphasis on being a comprehensive and also a holistic solution? We have created our program with this in mind every step of the way because pain impacts all areas of our well-being and all of these aspects of well-being can in turn impact pain. So there's really a bi-directional relationship that exists. We can't just look at someone as neck pain or someone just having an ankle issue because it's much more than that. For instance, if you're having significant back pain, let's say, you're likely going to want to be less physically active because it hurts to move, but if you decrease your activity too much, that can actually then in turn lead to your pain becoming worse. Our physical health is also very intertwined with our men mental health. And in fact, people who experience chronic neck and chronic low back pain, they're three to five times more likely to experience anxiety and depression symptoms. So we offer a fully fledged cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT program in conjunction, in conjunction with our exercise program. So this is based on mindfulness, acceptance and commitment theory, therapy with various audio and written pieces of content here. And we put such a large emphasis on this because mental health then can also affect things like your mood, your appetite, sleep. It can create higher stress levels. So you can really see here how if you're having musculoskeletal pain, it can really start this cascading effect and start to seep into aspects of all aspects of someone's life. And Brittany, all your points are completely spot on. Um, this actually makes me think of my own experience and how I struggled um, at work when I had all my back pain. Um, it was completely hidden from my employer, uh, but being in sales, I spent a lot of time traveling and I would get anxious prior to every flight or long drive because I wouldn't know how intense my flare-ups would be from sitting for prolonged periods of time. So I, pro I proactively take a few Tylenol, um, to reduce any pain, I skipped after hours activities because I needed to get home or get to the hotel room to stretch. And I, I look at all this and I think I was the perfect example of a silent sufferer because on the outside, like everything was fine. I was happy go lucky. Sure. Where do you need to go travel? What conference? Where do you need to be? But on the inside, it caused a lot of anxiety and it really took a toll on my health and, and a number of these things in, in other ways. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lauren, because I think it's really important to allow people to know that there are other people suffering out there. It's okay to voice this, and there are things we can do about it. And I think there are so many people out there just like you and experiencing this in, silent, in suffering in silence. And that's exactly why it's so important for us to take that holistic standpoint to really ensure we're addressing the whole person and their overall well-being. So how we're doing this, when someone comes into the SWORD program, we really have this unique opportunity to screen and identify those who could be suffering in silence with the various aspects of their life other than just their physical pain. And um, we need to be asking the right questions to be able to do this. So what we're doing is we utilize standardized outcome measures 
And each person who comes in will answer these questions and we're tracking it throughout their entire journey. The physical therapist they're working with will be discussing it with them and to ensure that we're providing that holistic care approach that is really individualized to that specific person's needs and then providing the extra support in the ways that that person might need it. And this is just one instance of how we're really providing equitable care. Furthermore, the musculoskeletal conditions are found to be linked to increased risk of other chronic diseases, which has also been demonstrated not only in systematic reviews and meta-analyses, but also in SWORD's own data. So we're able to see that 8 in 10 people that have chronic pain are screening positive for a mental health condition. People with low back pain have a 25% increased risk for cancer and are actually two times more likely to develop heart disease. And also there is a 16% increased risk for diabetes in those with osteoarthritis. So what this data is really demonstrating is that receiving the right care to provide relief in the body is really a key part to overall wellness and well-being. The right care is going to include not only clinical rigor, but also another piece of this puzzle, which Lauren mentioned a little bit earlier, is engagement of that member in the program. Are they actually engaging to get the benefits from it? And as I mentioned with um, the bi-directional bi relationship between pain and well-being, if we consider that person with the chronic low back pain with the increased likelihood of becoming depressed, they're likely probably going to be less motivated to get out of the house multiple times a week to attend PT appointments, and the literature supports that with only half of people completing only four sessions of their physical therapy in person, which really is just not enough to make any sort of clinical um, meaningful improvement in someone's chronic condition. So we need to be providing a solution that fosters and promotes really high engagement, and that really becomes of utmost importance here. So SWORD's digital physical therapy creates a space that engagement is actually better than expected, which I'm sure many of you are aware of. That's really not always typical in healthcare. So the way that we're doing this is through utilizing an evidence-based approach where our PTs are using their clinical expertise along with accounting for patient preference and circumstance. So we're meeting the member where they're at. We're discussing with them and taking into consideration what is their lifestyle? Do they like to run marathons? What are their goals? What are their job requirements, their time demands, their hobbies? So we want to make sure that we're asking all of these questions and integrating it into our program and into their specific plan. So when we combine that, with digital physical therapy being much more convenient so we don't have members having to leave their home. They don't have to call off work to make their appointments. They don't have to account for the travel to and from a clinic. We're reducing that financial burden and still providing them with the clin clinical expertise through a tailored exercise program, providing them education on how to improve their condition, and also that support and guidance of a physical therapist with frequent communication to really assist in proper behavior changes. Now, I want to talk about the behavior changes very briefly because behavior change is a huge part of musculoskeletal care. And there's something called the Hawthorne effect, which some of you might be familiar with. But for those who are not, it is the alteration of someone's behavior due to that person's awareness of being observed. So when there is a rapport and a relationship built with the member and their physical therapist with frequent communication, this really helps to evoke those behavior changes that are needed for those long-term impacts. If someone knows that the PT can see if they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, there's something that clicks in our brain that's like, ooh, I better engage. I don't want to disappoint this person. I need to get better. Um, so that's really important, and that really helps to what we're seeing in leading to SOAR's adherence rate to being over 80%, while the in-person care stands at 30%. Our members are also completing, on average, 31 sessions with a 9.7 out of 10 satisfaction score. So convenience and accountability are the mainstays that really contribute to this high adherence rate. And where engagement is high, strong outcomes will follow that, right? So we, we are seeing improvements in physical health, with significant reductions in pain, surgery intent, and medication consumption reduced by half in members that are participating in SWORD. Our members are also seeing the benefits on their mental health as well with 50 around 50% improvement in anxiety and depression symptoms, which is also leading to increased productivity at work. It's all connected. So we also recently published the evidence showing that we've been able to help members with mental health comorbidities in improving their fear avoidance that typically exists with those who are in chronic pain. So getting them moving and engaging in their normal activities more as well. Now we're able to see these significant changes 
because we're breaking down those barriers that Lauren mentioned that we are traditionally seeing in physical therapy and in, per and in person physical therapy with the access to care. We're reducing, reducing those racial and gender disparities and generally making it just much more convenient and equitable for people to engage in a clinical grade solution. So it's breaking down those barriers is how we're really going to reach those silent suffer sufferers and begin um, to give them the tools they need to help address their health more holistically. Now, the ability to reach those who are suffering in silence with pelvic health conditions is particularly important for all the reasons that we mentioned. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to Liz to um, go a bit deeper into that now. Thank you, Brittany. So, really, pelvic health disorders can present with a variety of symptoms, including pelvic pain, discomfort, urinary incontinence, postpartum core weakness, and painful intercourse, and much more. These types of symptoms can be embarrassing to admit to, and if doctors aren't bringing them up, may, many women assume that their symptoms are just a normal part of their life stage, especially for those that are pregnant in postpartum or menopause as well. But while these symptoms such as leakage after pregnancy and aging may be common, they really should not be the norm. And unfortunately, if you ignore these disorders, they will get worse. Our bodies are really smart and they are fascinating and can adapt to many things to get you through your life. But as you continue to live in dysfunction and, and move through your life, it creates vulnerabilities in the system. And eventually, all of those adaptations reach a breaking point. It may get to the point where you're experiencing chronic conditions leading to a worsening of emotional well-being and also the need to make lifestyle adaptations just to do everyday activities. So that leads us to another poll question here. This one is for women, don't worry, your results will be anonymous. And so we just want to get a pulse on, has your quality of life ever been compromised due to pelvic, dis pelvic dysfunction? And examples of this may include, but again, are not limited to missing work, feeling anxious or depressed because of your symptoms, staying home due to pain or discomfort, being afraid to leave the house due to symptoms. I have many patients that have stopped going out and seeing friends and loved ones because of their symptoms or discomfort. This can also include strained relationships with partners due to dysfunction with intercourse. So just take a moment to answer that poll and we'll take a look at the answers shortly. Listen, just heads up, I will close the poll and then it takes about 30 seconds to close. Uh, while it's closing, I won't be able to speak to you, but uh, just give me a cue when you want me to close it and then wait 30 seconds before we can review results. All right, so the results are in. Has your quality of life ever been affected due to pelvic dysfunction? 55 of people who have answered said yes, and that is significant. So if you resonated with anything that we spoke about today, please know that you're not alone and there is there are solutions out there for you. And so I want that just leads me into my next our next speaker. You are going to be able to hear a very special story from our colleague Danielle who participated in what was previously SWORD's Pelvic Floor program um, and is now Bloom. Danielle's story is really fascinating because her experience in the program eventually led her to work with us here at Sword and Bloom, and she's now a digital marketing specialist at Bloom, and we're just so grateful that she is being brave and, and vulnerable with us here today to share her story. So, Danielle, if you don't mind, will you just walk us through your pelvic health journey and tell the story of how you ended up here? Of course. Uh, thanks, Liz. Um, it's an honor to meet with you all today. Uh, as Liz mentioned, I was a patient of digital pelvic therapy before I became a passionate employee of Bloom, Swartz Pelvic Health Program. I have three kids. All were born by C-section. A week after my third C-section, I suffered a severe postpartum hemorrhage and life-threatening complications. I had multiple surgeries, but a week after my release, it happened all over again. And I ended up needing another C-section to remove my uterus via hysterectomy. This caused an array of pelvic complications, which I now recognize as pelvic dysfunction. I had consistent bladder pain, urinary urgency, and painful intercourse. My family likes to explore the coast, but I started hating road trips because I would have to dehydrate myself to avoid making frequent stops. I had anxiety every time I left the house, not knowing where the nearest bathroom would be. After 18 months of struggling, my doctor suggested pelvic floor physical therapy, but I couldn't make it to in-person appointments. 
I'm sure many of you resonate with this. As a new mom, I could barely find time to shower, let alone drive to physical therapy three times a week. And the nearest public floor physical therapist was 40 minutes away. And I'm not even a, in a rural area. I live just south of Seattle. I had basically given up and was slipping into depression when my husband told me his employer was offering digital physical therapy as a wellness benefit. For me, uh, digital care was life changing. I could do the sessions at home on my own time and I didn't need to coordinate child care for appointments. I was able to adhere to it long enough to actually make substantial improvements to my pelvic health. Caitlin, my pelvic health specialist, is absolutely amazing. She made me feel comfortable talking about a subject that's usually really difficult to address. Um, it's just obvious because I'm here today and has provided consistent guidance and support that has been instrumental in my recovery. I can run around with my kids. I'm back to playing soccer and I have a better range of motion. I also don't pee when I sneeze and I no longer experience pain with intimacy. I'm finally feeling like myself again, both physically and emotionally which makes me a better mom, a happier wife, and a more present employee. While my situation may seem extreme, my symptoms are not that uncommon. There are so many women out there dealing with these issues in silence because whether they have given birth or are going through menopause, they believe that their symptoms are normal. And because of that, these topics are not being brought up with their gynecologist. We have to start talking about this. Women deserve to know that there's a solution available to them and that they don't have to suffer in silence. And while I'm passionate about speaking up about, about, about women's health, we're here today to represent everyone who's struggling with pain or discomfort every single day. From the desk workers feeling doomed by back pain to the laborers working through throbbing shoulders, we know you're struggling in silence, but you don't have to be. You're in this webinar because you care. Joining us today was step one. Making the solution available is step two. I hope that by being here, we're all one step closer to freeing the silent sufferers because I used to be one. And because of this program, I'm not silent anymore and I'm definitely not suffering. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing, Danielle. Um, I've probably heard you share your story. I, I mean, I don't know how many times you've shared it with us at SWORD and every single time it moves me in a different way. And it just breaks my heart that there are, there are so many women and just, I mean, I just think about amongst women, we talk, we don't talk about these things, but if you can start the conversation with other women, they open up and it's startling how many of us have, have suffered and had similar experiences to you. So thank you. Um, the first step is just talking about it, sharing stories like yours, Danielle. Um, yeah, it's, Thanks, it's Lauren. yeah. Thank you, Danielle. Um, so together, Sword and Bloom can provide a musculoskeletal solution that addresses the entire spectrum of pain and really aims to help those suffering in silence get what they need. Uh, I see that we have a number of people that have dropped questions into the Q&A. This is the time in the presentation that we will start addressing these. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to add them in now. And let's see, We've got a lot of questions going on here. All right, so one of the first questions I have is, how do you join the program? Um, so I'll start with this, and then Brittany, I'll actually hand it over to you. So the first step is to access the program. This is available through employers um, or to employers for their employees and then their, their families. So it is not a direct consumer option. And the way that you can access the program is you have to um, elect to work with SWORD as your musculoskeletal provider. Uh, but once your employer has opted to do that, uh, you go through a process where we market all the information to your employees, leveraging a number of different channels, whatever works best for the employer. Um, and then from there, they go through a unique member experience. Um, Brittany, do you mind kind of talking through once the member has, you know, raised their hand and said, yes, I want to try SWORD, what that looks like for them? Yeah, absolutely. So once the person learns about it, we're typically providing in these marketing materials, Lauren mentioned a QR code, a URL, or if you have an intranet, they can go in through there and they can um, choose to fill out an enrollment survey. And they'll fill out questions about what type of pain they're experiencing, questions about their past medical history, anxiety, depression screening, all the other standardized outcome measures that I had mentioned. And from there, they'll actually get to choose the physical therapist they want to work with and then choose a time to have their initial video call with that PT. And from there, there will be a, a screening portion where the PT will meet 
um, virtually with that person to make sure they're appropriate and to begin to design their program for them. Thank you, Brittany. And I think this next question will also go back to you. Um, but the question is, how do you actually know that a member is engaged? Um, can you tell if they're faking it in order to get credit from, say, a health plan, or maybe they're working through another vendor as we have another part, number of partnerships? Um, that's something we didn't talk too much about is, is our technology, but this might be a great chance to talk through how do we, how as a physical therapist yourself, do you know that people are actually participating? Yeah, this is a really great question. So everyone that comes into our program, we provide them with technology to do their exercises with. So we provide them with an FDA listed medical device, a tablet, and um, there's motion trackers or visual feedback when they're doing their exercises. So that's tracking all of their um, movements. So I can see not only how far they're moving with every single movement they're making, but I can actually see if they're engaged in the program. So after one of my members completes a session, I will actually get a notification letting me know that they've completed completed one so I can go in and look at their results. So if I'm not getting a notification that they're completing them, I know that they're not engaged and then I'll be um, I'll reach out to them to see exactly, you know, what's going on, what's interfering with their ability to engage here um, so we can work on that problem solve and we can make changes necessary to make sure that it's easier for them to engage. Thank you, Brittany. And uh, I go back to the comment you were making earlier about just knowing that someone's kind of watching you and you're being held accountable. Uh, that was me with Julie. Uh, I don't know how many times I've, I skipped maybe a few days where I just knew like she was going to ping me. I was going to get that message from her. But yeah, they are getting all that data and they can see uh, when you're doing everything. Yes, if we're asking you to do four sessions a week and three or four days has gone by, I will send you a little note and most people are like, oh no, I'm so sorry, I'll get on and do it. Sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. So it's really nice to have that reminder from the physical therapist. Exactly. This is question is for Liz. How does Bloom help with menopause? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So just like pregnancy, postpartum, menopause is another stage of life where there are a ton of hormone changes. And a lot of times with hormone changes cause tissue changes, right? When you're pregnant, there's a hormone called relaxing, forcing through your body, and all of your tissues tend to loosen up to accommodate the baby. It's similar with menopause. In fact, it's a little bit uh, kind of the opposite, actually. And so a lot of times with menopause, we have symptoms like pain with intercourse um, or, you know, hot flashes and a lot of you know, muscular tension. And so with all of these musculoskeletal changes, bloom and pelvic therapy is really indicated to make sure that we're getting in front of all of these symptoms. And so bloom and pelvic therapy is essentially a musculoskeletal solution um, for the, all of the consequences and symptoms that happen because of menopause. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, so menopause is just one of the many um, conditions that pelvic floor therapy can help with. And until coming to SORT, I had no idea that pelvic floor therapy was even a thing and all the ways that it can help you. So I know I talked a lot about my back pain, but I've also myself participated in Bloom, and, and that's been a game changer for me. Another question we have is, oh, I get this a lot in meetings, especially if someone has gone through physical therapy in person before. A critical part of physical therapy is the assessment. How are effective assessments conducted virtually? Brittany and Liz, I actually think I'll let you cover those, one from the MSK standpoint and then from the pelvic health. Yeah, sure. So with SWORD, what we're doing is, as I mentioned, we're having that initial video call with each member. And what we're doing here is we're really diving in, having an understanding of how is that pain affecting their life. Um, we're going to have them, you know, if it's a shoulder, I'm going to have them get up. I'm going to have them move their shoulder in different ways. I'm going to watch them lift something up if, some, if, if lifting objects is painful. So I can actually see how their movement patterns are with these functional movements. Um, and from that, that's what's going to give me the information I need to begin to develop their exercise program. And then, as I mentioned, we're sending each person the technology, so we're tracking those movements. So I'm constantly assessing their movements every single session that they do with SWORD. And based on that clinical data that I'm able to see, I'm able to see how far into the range of motion they're going. I can see if they're making movement errors. I can see what movement errors they are making. So based on that information, I'm able to have discussions with them and to tailor their exercises and, and base it, um, the changes off the response to their exercises. And then Liz, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, so definitely, you know, for the shoulder, you can see that. I understand how it might be a little bit more confusing, right? If somebody is having pelvic health disorder, how am I assessing that virtually? Um, but 
similar to right the FDA listed trackers we have and we utilize an intravaginal sensor and this is really giving us that biofeedback of what the person's pelvic floor is doing in the video call we are going through in great detail our member signs and symptoms and I would say as a doctor physical therapist who has been practicing for several years about 75 to 80 percent of all the information we need is all within the subjective assessment if somebody is having pain with intercourse i know that it's because they're over contracting if someone is having certain symptoms such as leakage i know that it is correlated with a little bit of of weakness pelvic floor weakness and so the intravaginal sensor can just help me make sure that that clinical quality of my decision making and the quality assurance for that member is in fact accurate and so i can tell how many grams of strength the person is is eliciting when they're contracting and how lengthen how much lengthening they're getting which is the opposite of a contraction um, just because that sensor is measuring force and and pressure there so hopefully that helps answer that question Thank you, Liz and Brittany. Um, this is a really personal, um, it's a comment and a, and a question, but it's certainly personal. Um, I know I have this problem and it has affected my life drastically. I'm in constant pain and have stopped all activities. I know my kids are feeling the result of this. Uh, do you have options for people outside of the US as I live in Canada? The great news is yes. Uh, so fun fact, SWORD was actually founded in Portugal in 2015. Since then, we have expanded internationally to across the US, coast to coast, uh, to Canada, parts of the UK, and are continuing to expand our global reach. So if you are an organization with employees in the US, Canada, Puerto Rico, other parts of the, the world, uh, we can certainly have that conversation and talk about ways we can support your international workforce. We have time for one more question. Let's see. Ah, does every person get a physical therapist, whether they are in the SWORD program or in Bloom? Brittany, do you want to take that one? Yes, absolutely. So, yes, we only use doctors of physical therapy. So, on the SWORD side, this is a doctor of physical therapy. We only hire people with clinical experience at least three years. And on the uh, Bloom side, everyone is has a credential of a doctor of physical therapy but they have additional training in pelvic health because this is a sensitive area it's a sensitive subject and there needs to be additional training there to work with the pelvic floor so everybody will get a uh, physical therapist though thank you Brittany. all right so that's all the questions we have today Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, this is a really tough topic for a lot of people to talk about. Uh, we know it's impacting a lot of the people in your workforce, possibly yourself, your friends, your family, um, but hopefully learning that there are resources available and that there are ways to overcome this um, gives you some hope and gives you um, some real answers that there, there is something you can do to, to feel better. So thank you again for joining us um, from everyone here at SWORD. And if you have any additional questions or interest in talking to SWORD, you can, of course, reach out to us directly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.